I'll let you take it from here on. Awesome, thanks. Hey, welcome everyone. Um, you're probably wondering, you know, hey, why are you here? Um, today's session is all about Bluebeam uh, Online, what's well, called Bluebeam Cloud. I'm gonna start sharing my screen. And if you have seen my presentations, you know I love doing things live. So if it glitches, it glitches. Um, you know, nothing is canned, everything is live. That way you kind of see what's going on live. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Here we go. And move this over. And what I'm doing is I'm using the new Bluebeam Review 21. By the way, spoiler alert, uh, Review 21, there's no changes. There's nothing different. Um, the application really itself, there's no changes whatsoever within the features of Review 21. We're looking at over here, Review uh, 21, the latest version. And over here, literally, all of the drop-down menus, everything is exactly the same. Depending on which version you get, um, you'll have different features that you will have available to you on the different editions. The biggest change to the application itself is found over here in the top right-hand corner, where when you sign in, um, it'll automatically assign in with the same username over here in Studio. So you don't have to sign in twice. That's really it. Um, when it comes to Review 21 and the new subscription model, if you have questions in regards to pricing, um, you know, I have Bluebeam Review 20 or I have Bluebeam Review 2019, all your questions and related to non-technical questions, please email them to us at bluebeam at asti.com and uh, we'll get back to you on that. But on the tech side, um, I'm here to answer any questions that you have with the new Bluebeam Review 21 as well as Bluebeam Cloud. So what exactly is Bluebeam Cloud? Um, if it's the first time that you're seeing Bluebeam Cloud, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what Bluebeam Cloud is. Bluebeam Cloud allows you to take drawings that are conventionally on Bluebeam projects or sessions. And typically within Bluebeam projects and sessions, you either invite people to them in projects and sessions, and you can collaborate with others simultaneously if you use sessions with a PDF. What Bluebeam has introduced within the new subscription model, if you move to Review 21, it includes in all three editions of Bluebeam 21, the ability to store your documents online and invite participants to basically go through and access your information and mark them up and collaborate um, without the use of Bluebeam. So let me say that again. Again, if I were to click on this right here, it doesn't matter what PC I'm using. It doesn't matter if it's a PC, if it's a Mac, if I'm running Linux or I'm using a Chromebook or using my iPhone or an Android device, this is all web-based. And because it's web-based, it doesn't require any PC application. Um, you have on the left-hand side your tools that you're typically used to seeing within Bluebeam, but it's limited. There isn't a whole lot of tools here. Um, and you can also include RFIs and punch lists. The idea with this is that if you've ever used Bluebeam Review Drawings, this is Bluebeam Review Drawings on steroids, where you have the ability to go through and create, uh, for example, all of these different things. I'm gonna create, for example, here a, uh, a call out, and I'll simply just click and place my call out and type in this is a fallout. Now, in just a little bit, I'll show you how easy it is to start to play and uh, utilize these. There we go. And so that's a call out. And I can put text, I can put highlighters. The nice thing about this is it also includes your tool chest. So once you start creating your tool chest, you have the ability to go through and use those same tools that you had on your uh, computer and I place this right here <laughs> and start typing some information. That one really got squirrely. See, that's what happens when you do things live. Um, but the idea is that all of your tools that you created on Bluebeam on your regular PC, you can import those in and I'll show you how to do that on a real project. What I'd like you to, what, I'm, what I'd like to do with you all is I'm gonna show you a workflow on starting from scratch, on starting a project and then bringing it into Bluebeam Cloud and inviting others. And I'll show you exactly what that looks like 
when you invite others to participate. Now, by the way, uh, for users that are on Review 21, again, this is already included, and you can invite participants to play in the sandbox of Bluebeam Cloud. Now, if they are not paying for Bluebeam Cloud, they can be invited, but they can only be invited as viewers so that they can view and they have limited about a limited ability to respond. They can't create markups um, as a viewer. Similar to sessions, um, but in a session, as you guys might know, if you're invited to a Bluebeam session, it launches Bluebeam Review, and then that session, uh, that user has the full capability of using Bluebeam Review on the desktop. So that's really, really nice. Uh, something else that I'd like to throw out there, if you have questions, again, folks, put them down below. I'll be happy to answer them. If you have projects or sessions through Bluebeam Review 20 or 21, they live on one server. The cloud server for projects on Bluebeam Cloud is a separate server. These two servers don't talk to each other, okay? So uh, projects and sessions over here on this hand don't talk to the app over here online. So just something to keep in mind. All right, so let me go through and show you exactly how to start a project. And what I'm gonna do to make this happen quickly is I'm going to create a project through Bluebeam Review. Now, again, this can be done in Review 20 or Review 21. I'm gonna go over here to Bluebeam Studio. I've signed in, right? And again, I'm gonna go ahead and click and create a new project. So let's go ahead and give it a new project date, 2022. Today's the 20th. Wow, I can't believe it's almost the end of the year. Huh, time flies, right? I'll tell you, webinar cloud, isn't it great? Oh, you know what? It's not gonna like the apostrophe. I'm gonna say webinar cloud. Okay. So the reason why I'm doing this, you can upload files directly from your PC directly to the cloud, but I found that it's faster to do it through Studio Projects, okay? You don't have to go through Studio Projects, but I recommend it. Over here, what I'm going to do is simply upload files, and I'm gonna select Add Files, and I'm gonna to browse to my PC, and I'm gonna select these five files, okay? And hit OK. So this is the normal process as we start to go through and select and open up these files. And as you can see, the process is pretty quick. Uh, these Bluebeam projects, now it's available online. I can simply right click, check it out, right click, open, no. And now I'm working, right? I'm working on this project through Bluebeam projects and or sessions. I'm gonna go ahead and simply close this before I do, right? Got to check it back in. So I'm going to go over here, right click, and just close it, check it back in. I didn't make any markups on it. And you'll notice now it's read only, right? This is nothing new for folks that are using Bluebeam projects. By the way, I don't know if you can tell, but I love Bluebeam projects. Um, for those of you who don't know, you can also uh, take a look at the revision history so you can see how many times it's been worked on. That's something that you really can't get, uh, you know, in other applications. Plus, it's unlimited backups. You can restore at any point in time. You can even share these with non-users. But I digress. This is Bluebeam Projects. All right, I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. And what I'm going to do is I'm now back in Bluebeam Studio online, uh, the Bluebeam App Cloud. And what I'm going to do is go all the way to my dashboard and go view all projects. When I view all projects, I'm going to go to the top right-hand corner, and I know there's a little bit of a lag. So uh, over here, I'm going to click on New Project, and I'm going to call this um, Cloud Webinar or Could Webinar. That's not right. How about cloud, cloud webinar? I'll go ahead and create that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and simply click on it to open it up. Confirm this information over here, which is A-OK. -okay. And now it's an empty project that lives online. I'm simply going to click Upload Drawings right here in the middle. 
And when you do this, you have the ability to upload drawings directly from your computer or import. Now, when you import it, here's a really nice thing. It also has built-in integrations. So folks that are on SharePoint or OneDrive, you can directly link right into SharePoint. Um, I don't have SharePoint integration yet, but if I had SharePoint, um, it would link directly into SharePoint and I can pull that information or other integrations. Uh, I'm gonna go over here from Studio and over here is that Bluebeam Cloud Studio that we just created. I'm gonna go ahead and select it, select all the files, and then confirm my selection. Now, what it's doing is on the bottom left-hand side, I don't know if you see this, hopefully you do, it's currently uploading all of these files. Now, this might take a little bit of time, um, and then what it's going to do is it's actually going through and importing in, whoops, importing in all of these files, and then it's gonna automatically scan to create smart labels, all right? And over here, it's gonna tell me it's ready for review. So that didn't take a long time. It went through, this is great. It went through and scanned the PDFs. By the way, you can only use PDFs, FYI. Um, when working on drawings, there's PDFs. Documents, you can upload any file type, but drawings can only be PDFs. It automatically scans the information and extracts that information for the sheet name and number. That's awesome. It does it automatically. You don't have to scan the region like we typically do when we're creating sets or uh, creating page labels. This does it automatically. Now, if for whatever reason, any of these are incorrect, you can start to go through and adjust it. Like over here, the second floor reference plan, maybe this is supposed to be uh, first floor. It's not, it's actually the, uh, it's all the second floor, but you can update this anytime you want. Once you verify that all of these are good, then I select them and then click publish. Now, all it's done is now confirm that information and assign the sheet number and the sheet name uh, as labels, and I'm good to go. Next, what I need to do is start to go through and create my team. On the top right-hand corner over here, I'm going to invite other people to participate in this project. What I'm going to do is I have a fictitious user. I created an account, by the way. It's absolutely free to create these uh, accounts. And I'm going to go invite the user. And I'm going to put in this user. If you were in my last webinar, you might have seen me playing around with this. And I'm going to put uh, the new user over here, Jack electrical make sure electrical at gmail.com now this particular fictitious person e l e oops i almost misspelled it right there e l e c all right all right uh electrical jack e electrical now this person up oh, see no one's telling me i misspelled gmail Talking and typing is not my forte. <laughs> Over here, when I'm about to invite someone, if they are a paid member, I can have them be an admin or a member. If they are a non-paying member, which typically a lot of people I'm inviting as subs to review the content, they are free viewers. So they just will receive this and there's nothing they need to install. They just need to have an account uh, with Bluebeam. And setting up an account is absolutely free and you can assign them a different group. The groups are really nice, similar to the groups that we have in Studio Projects. Typically, I have an admin group and an all users group and a reviewers uh, group. Those three groups, that way I can assign, for example, the owners to view only. Um, in this case, I'm not gonna create groups. I'm just gonna leave it simple over here and hit invite. Now, in just a minute, over here, Jack E. Electrical, will receive a notification. And over here, here is Jack's email. And I can see over here that this individual has been invited to a project. Now, if they don't have a, an account yet, they can create one right over here on the bottom. So it's, it's very, very, very easy. Um, in order for this person to participate in the project, they have to join the project. Before I do, let's before I start creating some markups, I'm gonna go ahead and join the project. When I join the project as this new user, by the way, it's a free account, um, this individual will first have to verify their information and click confirm. 
So in the dashboard, this user sees that there's no punch list items, no RFIs. Again, because it's a free account, uh, this person really just has the ability to view the drawings, which might be fine. When I click over here, I can open up the drawings again as a free viewer. I'll show you what it looks like with a paid account. But as the free viewer opens up the drawing, on the left-hand side, they can open up the panel to see what they're working on. And if this was a paid account, right over here on the left-hand side, they would have a panel of tools. So this is just a free viewer. Okay, let's move this aside. Now, back over here in my account, when I go to drawings, since I have the full account, I can click on this second floor reference plan. And you'll notice in the paid account, I will have all of these tools right here on the left hand side. These tools, by the way, as I mentioned before, you have a tool chest and the very, very first time you launch this review 21, um, it'll ask you to go ahead and push the tools that you currently have in your tool chest up to the cloud and it'll capture all of them uh, just like I did here. So I have all of the ones that I typically use. If I want to add custom tools that I've already created, all I have to do is click this button right here, over here and select upload. Now, all I have to do is find a BTX file, the same BTX file that we do to create tools uh, in the tool sets under tool chest. And for example, I'm going to go over here and pick up this tool set called basic. Maybe I'll do one called linear. Why not? And go ahead and hit open. When I do that, it's going to automatically start to bring in that tool set. So creating tools, sharing tools is very, very easy, which by the way, the tools that I've created over here should be available to everyone if they're a paid member. That member that's Jack Electrical, since it's free, isn't going to have the tools. So over here now, uh, those tools are available. If there's some tools, and here's the kind of thing that you'll run into, uh, this markup is unavailable. It's not supported. So you might run into that where some of the types of markups that you create, yeah, uh, they're not supported yet. Wah, wah, wah. So there's that. Um, it's always, it's kind of like a work in progress. Uh, the nice thing about this is that as Bluebeam goes through and starts to make updates to this, um, it happens automatically. So there's nothing to download. It automatically will update that information. So back to the task at hand of working and marking this up. One of the things that I can do is I can start to create RFIs and punch list items. In this case, what I'm going to do is on this single sheet right here, I'm going to start to go through and add a cloud. When I click over here on this cloud, I have the ability to go through and cloud that information. Pretty neat. I'm going to go over here and start to add a call out. When I click on this little corner over here, I can do my cloud plus, which is the one that I really, really prefer using. And I'm going to add a cloud plus over here and put in here, please provide electrical plan for stairs. Right. And you saw that dialog box. When I click on it over here, I can start to change its color. I can change it to yellow, the font itself. Why would I do that? I'll keep it black. Over here, I can start to change the color of the highlighted area, what you and I would call the fill, right? Um, and it doesn't have the highlight feature, but in, instead it has opacity, um, which is the way of using kind of like the highlight feature. So that's kind of nice. Now, if I wanted to go through and assign this to an individual, basically I have two different methods. I can create an RFI or I can create a punch now, in this case, a punch list is what we would typically do through a walkthrough, right? An RFI is potentially more general in nature that we need more information. I'm going to show you both. In this case, I'm going to click punch. And you'll see this little pink or red little dot. I'm going to basically place it right here, which lands it right exactly where it needs to be. And I'm going to say the location. In this case, this is uh, sheet A1.2.2, or you could put the southwest corner or the north side of the building, and the description is uh, C notes. 
please provide information required. And I can give it a priority. I can say this is hot <laughs> or high and all the different levels of priority. When is it due? I'm going to say, you know what? This is actually due tomorrow, so get this done. Now, here's what's unique is now I can assign it a responsibility. Now, we weren't able to do this before in sessions or in projects. You can, but it doesn't alert the individual. Now, over here, I can assign this to Jack and assign him a discipline, which I don't. I can upload photos. Remember, this is a punch list, so typically that is used for punch list items as you're going through and you see something that's broken. I'm going to go over here and say that, oh, there, my discipline uh, just showed up. And I'm going to say this is concrete or whatever it is. And then I'm simply going to go over here and hit save. Now, it's going through and creating this punch list item. And what's nice about this is, as a project manager, there it is right here. I can see exactly where it is. And if I go back on the top left-hand corner to my dashboard, this is where I always start. In the dashboard, I probably need to give it just a little bit more time and I should see bum, ba -dum, a punch list item show up over here. There it is. I have one active punch. Now, let's take a look at that, what it looks like for Mr. Jack, uh, the electrical guy over here. And I'm going to go over here and refresh my Gmail. Okay. Go to my inbox. And there it is. So here's a new punch list item. And automatically. Now, the nice thing about this is you can do this on your phone. So if I use my iPhone over here or Android device, maybe even a BlackBerry, if anyone has Blackberries, <laughs> um, you can start to manage this. Now, in all honesty, uh, Android or iPhone users are really pretty much the dominant uh, user groups, and you can do this on any device. So when I simply click over here, I will click View Punch, and through the web interface right there, I'll be able to navigate to it. Now, remember, this is the free account that we're looking at. So I can click on the punch list item that's been assigned to me for this user. Select it. There we go. Checked items will be unchecked. Again, kind of working through this live. Remember, folks, if you have any questions, feel free. All right. So now I'd close this item over here. Item number one. Now, remember, over here, what I can do is, as the user who's free, I can simply click here. And just like hyperlinks, right, when you do summary reports, it uses that same type of technology to bring me right back into that sheet. And I can see where that is, which is right here. Awesome. So I, you'll notice there's no tools over here because this is the free account. I'm like, oh, okay. So I'll go ahead and zoom in on it. There it is right there. Awesome. And I can see exactly what it is. Please provide electrical plan for stairs. I'll go back. Okay. I'll go over to my RFIs. I'm sorry, a punch list. OK. And over here, what I can do is I can start to go through and comment back. That's it, as the comment. I'm going to say, we'll uh, provide new information, info, as requested. OK, remember, this is an RFI. I'm sorry, a punch, a punch list item. And I'll go ahead and submit this. So now this information that I just commented back, it's still over here. It's still open. Um, I can upload a photo. So if I have photographs as the end user, I can do that. Over here in comments, I can make comments back and forth. Um, and that's pretty much it as an end user. So I can change this. And as the user, I can say, All right, I've already put in my information and I'm going to say, hey, back to you, uh, the owner, whoever created this, ready for review and click save. I probably should have done that earlier. This ready for review, let's go ahead and slide that over. Am I making you dizzy, Diane, on going back and forth yet? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good, Rick. <laughs> All right. Hey, by the way, are, are we getting some questions in from uh, our audience? 
we do have some questions here. Um, would you like me to read some off right now? Or do you want to no, wait till the end? No, no, let's just wait. Let's just wait. Um, okay. When I go over <laughs> here to my punch list item, remember now I'm back as me. Um, I can see this is ready for review. I can look at what he wrote, right? And I can respond back. And I said, great. Thank you. Uh, I will close this item, right? And I misspelled it, but that's fine. And then I'll go back over here. And for me, notice I have different options. I can go over here and close that status. So it's no longer on my to-do list, okay? So that is a punch. Let's go through and create an RFI. Uh, same way, I'm gonna go ahead and click create an item. Over here, I'm going to say uh, need info on enlarged plan. Please see enlarged plan for question. I'm going to assign Jack again, distribute to uh, different people. But what I'm going to do is go through and upload the files. Uh, by inserting it. When I insert it, I can point to one of these files over here that I already have online. And basically, that's all I need to do. I can distribute that to multiple people, which is really, really nice. Again, I only have one person. And I'll go ahead and I can put in project code. So project code for this is 2022-10 and address, etc. and hit send. Now this RFI you'll notice it is open. When I go to my dashboard, this tells me all the information that I need to know, um, including I can do location, so I can start to add Google Maps. So if I start to go through and add the details here, I can do the web address. In this case, um, you know, I'm gonna call this West Palm Beach. Now, I really need the full address. So if I go through and add, for example, this airport, this airport is in uh, California, I think Sacramento. I'm going to try to find the actual address right here. So it is 6900 Airport Boulevard. Sacramento. Spell that Sacramento, California. And it is 95837. There we go. Save. Now, when I do that, it'll start to overlay and bring in this information. What I can do, actually, which is kind of fun, it's gimmicky if you ask me, I can start to overlay the image, the RFI, in this case, the not the, not the RFI, the site plan or the floor plan on top of the Google image, which is kind of nice. Um, but, you know, that's if you're looking at it from a satellite image. Nonetheless, you can start to rotate it and scale it manually to put it in place uh, so you can see where it is on top of the Google map image. I think it's kind of gimmicky if you ask me, but nonetheless, it's there for you. So we created our uh, item. I'm going to go back to my punch list. I have an open RFI. Let's go back to Jack over here <laughs> for the weather. And I'm going to go and take a look what just came in. So this right here, an RFI has been assigned to me. Now RFIs have a little bit more features. Again, as a free user, uh, this individual will have the ability to respond similarly. Uh, again, uh, will not have the ability to go through and make any comments. I mean, they'll make comments, but they won't be able to draw or measure. If they're on a paid account, they will have all the tools on the left-hand side. So we look at the drawing, uh, in this case as a viewer, and now I can create an official response. You see that that's a little bit different than before. My official response over here is, will provide in two weeks. Uh, I'm on <laughs> vacation until then. I can insert files. I can upload files just like I did before. Um, okay. And you'll notice it's due tomorrow. 
It's currently set up to open. I'll go ahead and hit send on this RFI. Now, with RFIs, it's different than a punch list. When I respond back to an RFI, it automatically closes it, which is really, really nice. Um, again, because that loophole is really just um, question, RFI, I respond, and it automatically is closed. So it's no longer on my list. If I go over here to my dashboard as Jack, uh, you'll notice that there's nothing overdue. There's no RFIs nor punch list items. Let's slide them over over here. I'll refresh this on the cloud. Okay. And I should see no open RFIs. Isn't that awesome? I can click over here on view all. And on the RFIs, I can see that this has automatically been closed for me. So that's really nice. And when I click on it, I can see his response over here and say, you know what? I don't agree with this. I'm going to go ahead and reopen it. And I'm going to say uh, reopened. I need this tomorrow or else. <laughs> All right. And I'll go ahead and uh, assign it back to Jack. I'm like, hey, listen, you can't go on vacation yet. I just put it back on open. So that's really kind of the overview. Um, again, folks, when you're working with Bluebeam Cloud, all of this information is available to you online. Uh, you'll notice in the uh, email that I received uh, over here, at the very bottom, there's actually a new Bluebeam Cloud app, which is absolutely free. So you can manage that information instead of going through the web. It's still through the web. You still have to have internet connection, but it just makes it a little bit more user-friendly using the app. So that's it. That's what I wanted to show you folks. Let's go in and see what kind of questions we have from our users. All right. Like Thank you, Roy, for walking us through all of that. <laughs> My pleasure. Okay. All right, so before we move on to opening the Q&A box, uh, well, at this time, you can submit all your questions that you have, um, but I do want to invite all of you to scan the QR code that you see on the presentation slide for upcoming events. Um, you will see, once you scan the QR code, you will see two links for our upcoming Bluebeam office hours and our November webinar. Um, if you're not able to scan it, you're also, will have a resource tab on the right hand corner of your screen and you'll be able to find those links there as well so um, make sure to register and save your spot for the upcoming events all right uh, let's see here so we have a question from mark um, and i think you might have gone through this but let's go through it again it's what integration is there with sharepoint Oh, okay. So the integration with SharePoint Mark is awesome. So when you start to bring in files, uh, specifically, we're talking about PDFs um, for the workflow that I, I use within drawings. Um, when you launch that, if you click in other integrations, you have the ability to link in to SharePoint. And it's, and it's absolutely included. And what's nice, you just need your username and password. There's nothing um, that you have to do on the back end to I'll, you know, basically allow it. If you have questions, if you are using Review 21 and you're having problems with those integrations, please feel free to uh, reach out to us at bluebeam at asti.com. All right, I hope that answers the question for you, Mark. Uh, so we have one here from David. If you have if you have markups that were applied in Review 21 or older and you upload the file to cloud, are you able to copy, paste, or edit those markups? You know what? Let's see. Um, I, you should be able to. I haven't tried that. Uh, you should be able to. Um, so uh, that's a very, very good question. So tell you what, let's, I'm going to go through, since we have time, I'm going to share my screen. Let's give it a shot. I'm going to start screen share because I think that's a great question and one that I have not explored yet. So I'm going to go over here. You guys see I'm working on Bluebeam. I'm going to go through and just add a new PDF, just an empty page. Okay. And within this empty page, I'm going to go ahead and add some markups. So I'm just going to go to K for my Cloud Plus. Love Cloud Plus. Love Cloud Plus. Will you marry me? <laughs> Too funny. I'm crazy like that. 
Today's my anniversary, actually. Nine years. Love it. My ninth anniversary. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. I'm going to copy this a couple times. Change its color just for fun, right? And have this one be blue. I'm going to go ahead and save this as cloud test, right? Go ahead and save that. Go back into this right here, upload files, and I'm going to add open files. I don't know if you knew that you could do that. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and open that file right there. All right. So, oh, shoot. You know what? Let me go through and upload it the way that I did before, but differently. I'm going to click Add Drawings on the right-hand side. I'm going to Browse Files and browse over here to that cloud test that I just created. So showing a different way. Again, bringing it in manually. And you'll notice on the right-hand side, your drawings upload is complete. We're processing. That might take a few minutes. Now, this is going to be interesting because there's no title block. It's going to have a hard time scanning. It's going to look for a sheet number. So I have to wait until this thing says it's ready. There it is, ready for review. So I'm going to go ahead and review it, and I'm going to say this right here uh, looks good. I'm going to say the number over here is A. Uh, I'm going to call it G0, G1, test, cloud, and awesome. And I'm going to go ahead and that's it. Close this and select it and publish. So let's take that for a test drive. That'll be neat. Um, so here it is right over here. I'm going to go ahead and open it. That's a great question. What you're seeing on the screen is just my add-in over here. Um, oh, look at that. So yeah, look at that. We can go through and uh, edit it. It's just a regular markup. How neat is that? Regular markup. And I can't talk and type at the same time. <laughs> so over here, I'll go ahead and change its color and change its opacity. Again, you can't use highlighter. Uh, you can just lower it. So that's neat. Great question. Wow. Now, I will tell you, I have yet to find um, over here a way to, you know, you would be able to normally right click and add this to the tool chest. Um, and you can't. You can upload your tools, and there's no like my tools or current tools that you typically see in Bluebeam. So great question though, but yes. So to answer uh, your question, you can adjust uh, markups that are created. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So we have a question here from Liz. Um, if you have Bluebeam 21 installed on a PC and you don't log in, can you still use it in view mode? If you haven't installed, in view mode, you can still use it, but um, in view mode, you can only open up the drawings. Uh, once it's in view mode, there's nothing you can do other than view drawings uh, after 30 days. Um, you can just view drawings, period. You won't be able to mark up anything in review 20 or 21 um, when it's in view mode after the 30 days. Um, but keep in mind, those projects in sessions, everything that you are looking at on the review PC side, those are different projects that are over here on the cloud, those two separate servers. They don't talk to each other, at least not yet. <laughs> um, so Liz also asking, uh, what's the difference between the drawings and documents within Bluebeam Cloud? Ah, good question. So the difference is drawings are just PDFs only. Um, so you can only upload uh, PDFs. This is similar to projects and sessions. So in projects, you can upload any file type. In sessions, those are only PDFs. Uh, we're talking the PC side. Over here on the online Bluebeam Cloud, drawings are just going to be PDF drawings. Documents, on the other hand, I can upload any file type whatsoever. So if I have files over here, I select File, and I'm going to pick something that's a non-PDF. Let's see, I'm going to go to Documents. Uh, what's something that I have that is just a non 
creating punch, working with an issue. As you can see, everything that I have is PDFs. <laughs> Here's uh, pictures. So let's see what kind of pictures I have here. Do do do. Don't want to. There we go. All files. Select this. open and it should start to upload so again um, documents are pretty much any kind of document that supports your information so the idea with documents is you have your construction set of drawings your PDFs then you can upload other type of files uh, to complement your PDFs okay um, let's see here. What Jameson is asking, what features are there for architects? For architects. So for an architect working as a project manager, um, this really would give me the ability to go through. This is really geared towards contractors uh, to create punch lists and RFIs. As an architect, this gives us the ability to go through and share drawings with anyone um, so let's say we have an owner, right? And we want them to be able to review the drawings that we're looking at. Um, currently, you can create a session and invite them to a session on Bluebeam projects, right? On cloud, you can upload all of your files, invite them, and the as an owner working with an architect, they will be able to go through and review the drawings by looking at them, but they will not have the tools. Um, so as an architect, the really the the draw for this is the ability to share drawings with others and they can view the drawings on any device and they don't have to use Bluebeam. Perfect. Um, let's see here. Mitch is asking, can a free view create RFIs? Right. Say that again. Can a free viewer create RFIs? Can a free viewer create RFIs? Let's take a look. I don't think you can. So over here, I'm going to go and this is on the free account. Nope. Can't create. You can respond, but you can't create. There we go. All right. Um, we have a question here again from David. Uh, does the cloud generate a markup list? No. It does not. No. That would be a really good suggestion. Um, matter of fact, the, Bluebeam is always looking. I, I think of this as the first version, their first try at it. Um, if you click on the question over here, uh, you have the ability to go through and email them uh, to basically go through and provide feedback. They love getting feedback, and I think a markups list would be great. Uh, some type of integration like that. Yeah. Um, all right. We have one more question here. Um, is there a feature or function matrix that compares project sessions or cloud? A matrix that compares, you mean like comparing drawings? Um, I, if that's what you're, if you're asking about like the drawing compare feature that we have in Bluebeam review, uh, there is no compare feature uh, yet over here on Bluebeam Cloud. Okay. Um, yeah, they really do act independently. Um, I really think that Bluebeam Cloud is a niche for general contractors and subs, really. Um, and I think it's starting to compete in the space of Plan Grid and Procore, um, and Bluebeam is trying to get in on that action. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> I think we'll see some really nice things once this really starts to develop further. And the nice thing about it is since it's not a application like we have installed on our computers, they're going to create updates on this all the time and it's only going to get better. So uh, only good things. I'm a half full glass kind of guy. <laughs> no, that is good though. Uh, so what we have one more question here that just came in. Um, is there a best practice for getting the PDFs back out of cloud for archiving on local storage wow um that's a new one so if we go through and select them all 
um, all we have to do is go through and you should be able to download those files. So that's an interesting question that I haven't uh, gotten a question on. So let's go over here to files, export, sync. You know, that is a great question. Um, make sure to give me your email address and I'll see how we can uh, provide that back to you. I believe, I mean, I know there's a way to download it. Um, there should be. There it is, right there. So it looks like you download it one at a time. Right over here, I've selected the file and select download. And it should show up in my downloads folder right here. So that's one file at a time, but it sure would be nice to select all and download them all. But I don't see that as an option. Wah, wah, wah. You know what? That's a good suggestion for Bluebeam folks. <laughs> All right. We got some good questions, some good suggestions to submit now to Bluebeam. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, I could download one at a time. Wah, wah, wah. Oh, uh, there's one question here, going back to the SharePoint, I'm not sure if you might have gone over this already, Rick, but with SharePoint integration, which environment is managing locking revisions, et cetera? In SharePoint integration, that's not going to lock the drawing out of SharePoint. Um, like typically when you're using SharePoint on Bluebeam, right, on the PC-based application, if it's configured correctly, you're checking out that file out of SharePoint and you use it within Bluebeam, right? And then you check it back into SharePoint. While it's checked out, no one else can access it. This integration from SharePoint does not check in or check out. It takes a copy of it and puts it online. The checking in, checking out is not even part of the whole environment here. Um, it's literally just saying, hey, I want a copy of that. Will you give me a copy so I can put it up here on Bluebeam Cloud? So it does not check in or check out anything. Absolutely. And hey, folks, remember, if you have questions, you have suggestions, you say, hey, Rick, I'd love to see a webinar on fill in the blank. Email it to us at bluebeam at asti.com. I love suggestions. If you have any issues whatsoever, email us and we'll be happy to help.